we went and asked a large number of civil servants in a hundred ministries, what is it that they think they need to do their jobs? What do they need to get better at? Four and a half million people have already signed on and uh, 10 million courses have been taken. We were very lucky that right at the beginning, uh, for a variety of reasons, we knew Madhwani. And so we envisioned doing a whole series on how technology has helped development. In the role that they are in, should have a series of competencies, which I identified. I think the idea is to link all of this together so that uh, every person has all the skills they require to do that job really, really well. This is the most exciting time because the opportunities available for them to not just do well for themselves, but to create world-beating technologies and to help the nation are better than anything. It's a very, very exciting time to build something in a country rather than uh, just continue. Hello and welcome to an insightful conversation with visionary leader and change maker Adil Zainal Bhai. Adil needs no introduction. He's had an illustrious corporate career and he's been at the helm of several firms like McKinsey, QCI and Network 18 to name a few. Today, as the chairman of Capacity Building Commission, it is our privilege to have him join us for a quick conversation on how the CBC is leading the charge in changing the face of public services in India. Thank you, Adil sir, for joining us. Adil sir, can you uh, tell us a little bit about the key initiatives taken by the CBC and the potential impact that you're looking at that creating for us? Well, first of all, you know, it's a very large exercise which will uh, take place over a period of time. Uh, the first, we did three or four things. One is we did something unusual for the government, which is we went and asked a large number of civil servants in a hundred ministries, what is it that they think they need to do their jobs? What do they need to get better at? Rather than imposing something, we wanted to ask them and we learned a lot by doing it. Okay. Uh, so essentially for a very large number of civil servants, based on their inputs and additional things that uh, you know the senior secretaries and PM and others thought were important, uh, we've now created a digital training calendar that is personalized to each individual. So any individual can go on to IGOT, which is the learning management system uh, that the Indian government has set up. Uh, and basically, if they enter their name, their title and what their role is, it will give them a customized training calendar about what things that they should get better in. Right. So, you know, and uh, then they can take it. And those competencies are in behavioral, uh, functional and domain. Right. So, for example, a large number of people told us that they wanted some courses on stress management. So actually the number one course is uh, yoga at the workplace and stress management. Awesome. Many people wanted functional courses such as Microsoft mm -hmm. Excel mm -hmm. and Microsoft uh, Word. I think some 400,000 people have taken that. Then people wanted, you know, how to manage people, uh, motivation, f giving feedback, leading teams, etc. Uh, and then they also wanted functional things like uh, how to do RTI, how to do uh, reservations, how to do parliamentary questions, uh, noting and drafting, uh, purchasing. So very, very frankly, useful things. You know, it's right. not esoteric stuff that people wanted. They wanted things that will help them do their job better. Right. So the first thing we did is to give people uh, access to that. And I'm very happy to say that uh, four and a half million people have already signed on and uh, 10 million courses have been taken. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of the best courses are seven, eight hundred thousand people have taken those courses. Uh, one of those, of course, is uh, uh, the course on uh, emerging technologies that Vadwani has done for us. So, you know, that's uh, so that was the first thing we did. Second thing is there are 700 training institutions of the government of India and we're trying to improve all of them. Uh, a third major thing we did is to teach people who are dealing with citizens, because not all three million deal with citizens and we're trying to teach them how to be citizen centric, right. which is how to respond to citizens as opposed to be regulators or, <clears throat> you know, impose rules. And I think uh, then there are many other things, but those are the three main areas that we've done quite a lot of work in. And that has helped push, I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you can do whatever you can, but it depends on whether people pick it up. Absolutely. And so we are seeing that about 10 million uh, courses have been taken. And by the end of this year, uh, we will have one and a half uh, we will have 1500 courses on IGOT, uh, maybe 7 or 8 million people will have signed up and we will have 15, 20 million courses there. So I think this is the world's largest training system that we have set up. So, you know, with technology taking over the world, 
uh, you know, it's imperative that, uh, you know, even the public services and government officials get, uh, you know, upskilled on that. So what do you see uh, as the main challenges in implementing that in the government today? So uh, I think PM has been very keen on two themes. One is citizen centricity and one is technology. And so we have put a big push in getting technology based programs onto IGOT. And we are very surprised at the pickup on it. So for example, the program on emerging technologies was taken by 400,000 people, out of which 25,000 are uh, Javans. You know, we never thought they would take it. But I think everybody wants to learn on technology. We are now expanding that so that there will be a large number of technology programs for different domains, technology in agriculture, technology in finance, technology in uh, construction, etc. Uh, so we are expanding that dramatically and I think everybody is taking it. Uh, we had a very simple course on how any individual can use ChatGPT and that has had enormous success. People want to use it. We've had a very interesting and simple course on how everyone can do cyber security, right, which is to prevent your identity to be uh, stolen, etc. And a very large number of people have taken it. So I think the notion of technology uh, is really taking off. We are very, very uh, excited to partner with CBC and with the Emerging Technologies course reaching a 400,000 mark. Uh, how do you see this partnership with the foundation evolving? I think when we started, our view was that uh, we should try and get the best from India and then the best from the world available to every uh, civil servant. And so we went out and tried to get this from anywhere and everywhere. And in fact, we were very lucky that right at the beginning, uh, for a variety of reasons, we knew Vadhwani. Uh, so I knew the Vadhwanis from before, I knew Prakash. Uh, and so they were very keen on doing a series of physical courses. And I said, listen, just put it on digital, don't worry about it. And of course, it has been so successful. So we expect, uh, I think that the partnership will continue, particularly in new technologies and in AI, uh, because you know, the next grouping is AI for different sectors, AI for different functions, AI in government. We, we envision doing a whole series on how technology has helped development right. uh, in different areas, you know, ag tech, uh, uh, medical tech, etc. So we hope that this uh, relationship will continue uh, and we can see that f from the one course that they started, I think today we have some 10 courses yes. and I think many more are under development. That's right. Adhisa, you spoke uh, a lot about the initiatives that are currently ongoing and I would love to understand your perspective uh, of the vision for CBC in the you know, next few years to come. Well, the idea uh, PM had said to us that start, instead of trying to change everything, start with one intervention and mm -hmm. so we chose capacity building as that intervention. Right. But ultimately the idea is that every civil servant in the role that they are in should have a series of competencies which I identified. They would be able to develop those competencies and take a test to see if they have the competencies right. and that their transfers, their promotions would be based on the competencies that they have built and how well they've acquired those competencies. Right. So I think the idea is to link all of this together so that uh, every person has all the skills they require to do that job really, really well, uh, both in terms of techniques and tools, but also in terms of behavior. Right. So you spoke of competencies. Is there a thinking to integrate this as part of the key performance metrics for government officials? Well, you know, there is something called APAR. Uh, and so the idea is that this would be built into APAR. Uh, hmm. And we would independently test the competencies of uh, every person as to whether they have the competencies to do that. Like for example, hmm. you know, if you wanted to uh, drive a scooter, you would have to get a license. You can't just say, you know, I'm so, I'm so many years old and therefore I should be able to drive a scooter, right? right? right. And it's the same way on every competency. You know, you, you get trained in something, you pass the test and then you go on to the next one and you pass the test for that, etc. Hmm. So yes, that's the direction we're going in. So looking back at your journey from engineering to management consultant to now leading uh, CBC, what advice would you offer to the next generation of innovators uh, in India's top academic institutions today? Uh, you know, first of all, uh, PM has laid out an amazing vision for Viksit Bharat hmm. uh, for the next 25 years. And in that, uh, you know, we are going to be leaders in many technologies and we are going to apply technologies. So every IIT, every academic institution has to play a very important role in establishing India's position in that technology. Right. And what I tell people who graduate is that this is the most exciting time because 
the opportunities available for them to not just do well for themselves, but to create world-beating technologies and to help the nation are better than anything uh, that, that we ever had when we graduated, right? So they should take advantage of it. It's a very, very exciting time to build something in a country rather than uh, just continue it, right? And so they have that opportunity. And so all academic institutions and all young people, I think, should focus not just on doing well for themselves, but also helping the country do well. Your career journey has been extremely inspiring for so many of us. So I'd like to understand from you, sir, how do you manage to continue pushing boundaries and yet find the balance? Um, you know, first of all, uh, we are all very lucky, right? Which is, uh, we were born at the right time when things were taking off. Uh, we got a great education in India. Uh, my education at IIT was, uh, the fees were a thousand rupees a year. Uh, you know, today the education at an uh, international university like MIT is close to $100,000 a year, right? So this is, uh, and secondly, we all, uh, I think you have to be lucky, uh, you have to work hard uh, and be lucky. Uh, sometimes timing is right, etc. And uh, you should never underestimate uh, the amount of things you are able to do because you are in the right place at the right time and right. because you worked at it. Right. Uh, I give people the example that when I graduated, after IIT and Harvard, which are the two best brands you can have, I applied for 100 jobs and I got 99 rejections. Okay? And uh, so it's very easy to say, you know, I've been the best university, I should get any job I want. Okay. But uh, you really have to work at it. And if you work at it, I think you get great opportunities over time. And if you're enjoying, you know, I enjoy what I do. It's not that I don't, haven't worked hard and I don't work hard. I mean, at the age of 71, I'm still working, you know, quite a very, very long hours. But uh, because it's so exciting and because it has so much impact, uh, it is, you can do it, right? If you're working on a job you don't like or working on something you don't like, then it drags. Absolutely. If you are doing something that you really like and you have the skills for, then it goes very fast. Absolutely. Sir. Before we wrap up, Padil sir, I will ask you a few rapid fire questions. Right. So a personal motto or a life mantra you live by? I think uh, uh, the life mantra I live by is, uh, you know, do the best at whatever you can. And then the rest will take care of itself. Uh, it's not to gain anything. It is, you know, it is uh, take our God-given gifts and do the best you can. Awesome. A song on your playlist these days? Uh, I have a very wide taste, as you'll see when it comes in books. I enjoy classical music, old Hindi music, Western classical, mm -hmm. pop, all of that. Uh, so I cover all of it. And I have some things in common with my 11-year-old granddaughter, which is we both listen to Taylor Swift also. Oh, that is wonderful. So you spoke about books and your taste in books are so a book that has profoundly, you know, influenced your thinking or leadership style. I have, you know, at any point in time, I try to read uh, four genres, right? I love uh, fiction, especially detective fiction and uh, spy fiction. So uh, I have one book always that I'm reading that's that. I always have one book that I'm reading that's history, uh, one book uh, uh, that is scientific, nonfiction. Uh, and, uh, you know, one book that is just for fun. You know, it's a light fiction. And so, you know, on, these days on a Kindle, you can carry all of them around and it doesn't that's matter. True. And depending on your mood, you can read any and all of them. So that's kind of, uh, you know, what I've been doing. But that's recently, true. I also read uh, the biography of Elon Musk, which is actually very well written and uh, a wonderful book to read, independent of what you think about uh, Elon and some of the crazy things he does and some of the brilliant things he does. It's a very interesting book on the development, on how he did what he did at uh, SpaceX and at Tesla uh, and at Neuralink and uh, etc. And now at Twitter, which is X. Uh, it helps you understand a little bit about people who are extraordinarily driven uh, and sort of the very complex personalities that allow them to do that's that. True. So that was a fun book to no, read. But that's, uh, that's very interesting what you said about reading, you know, four different kinds of books. I'm going to absolutely try that. I read quite a bit, but uh, this is going to be something very interesting for me to try. So one hidden talent or skill that most people don't know about you. I'm very good with my grandchildren. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> it's actually the most tiring thing to be with the grandchildren because it's so much fun, yeah. but it's also tiring physically. Uh, but yes, it's wonderful. Right, sir. Before we let you go back to your very, very busy day, I'm going to ask you one last question, sir. Uh, what would be your message to the listeners, including, you know, government officials who are going to be hearing us, you know, what is it that you'd like to say to them? 
uh, what I'd say is that, you know, uh, we are all very fortunate uh, to be in the situation we are in. Uh, we have an opportunity to help shape India and shape the world. And not often do you get that opportunity. You know, if you think about it, all of us who've grown up, at least my generation uh, or my contemporaries, we've never been through a very bad war, etc. Right? We've never been through, uh, other than COVID, we really went through something that affected everyone very deeply. Uh, so we've been in a good position and uh, we've had a, we now have a chance to make something major out of India. So, you know, don't waste your life in just achieving material good. Do something that will actually make a huge difference and give it your all. Uh, one of the things I've learned in working with the government is uh, no good ideas die. You know, they'll always come back. So if you, have, if you have a good idea and you keep at it and at it and at it, then many things can happen. Uh, thank you, Adil, sir, for sharing your insights. We look forward to uh, this partnership uh, with CBC and uh, taking it from strength to strength to build a digitally empowered India. Thank no, no, so and yeah, so I do have one thing that I do want to ask uh, the Vadwani Foundation and yes, Ramesh sir. and others, right, which is uh, you all have been great partners, but, you know, one of the things I've learned from the PM is always ask people to do something impossible. And we did ask you to do something impossible and you did it, which is great. But as soon as you do it, then you ask for the next 10 impossible things. Absolutely. So we are going to ask you for the next 10 impossible things. Thank you. Thank you. And we are going to be right beside you, sir.